Redefining Success. Everyone, I'm Matthew Cornwell with Get Taped here in Atlanta, Georgia, one of Atlanta's original audition taping services, which I co-own with my amazingly talented, beautiful wife and best friend, Brooke. Yeah. And now on to our topic. Redefining Success. Today, Matt has both dreams and goals. And let me give you my definition of each of those. A dream is something like walking the red carpet, holding that Oscar statue on stage, not presenting it, but receiving it. In short, something that you put on a vision board or you write in a dream journal, but it's maybe not something you're fully in control of the outcome. That would be a goal. A goal is something that I can write out the action steps that I'm in control of, that I can choose to do or not to do, that will in all likelihood lead to achieving that thing that I've written down. And it's a very important distinction that I hope to make clearer as this video goes on. Because now that I've defined goals and dreams, I also want to add that today, Matt, can get mired in the negativity of what I have not accomplished yet. Because, 2001, Matt, thought that I would be walking the red carpet by now. And so my idea of success can get buried in past expectations. And it's at this point that I want to take a quick diversion and quote the famous economist John Maynard Keynes. When the facts change, I change my mind. What do you do, sir? Not sure who the sir is in the quote, but for our purposes, it's you or it's maybe me. But what does this quote from 100 years ago have to do with the actor's journey or the actor's definition of success? Well, going back to today, Matt, versus 2001, Matt, if I'm still rigidly attached to 2001, Matt's idea of success, well, then I'm in for a world of hurt. Because 2001, Matt, would have defined success as having gotten my first Oscar before the age of 40. And I'm almost 46. And unfortunately, Coast Guard Dale from The Menu did not get nominated for a Best Supporting Actor Oscar. I was robbed. So if I hold myself accountable to 2001 Matt's definition of success, to put it bluntly, I am a failure. And if you're living under an outdated definition of success for yourself, then you might be feeling the same. But what any sane person would do is to evolve their definition of success as the facts change. So do you need to redefine your definition of success? And again, be careful about that distinction between dreams and goals. Keep those dreams on your vision board. Just don't make them your definition of success. Instead, focus on the goals that are more actionable, things that are within your control to affect the outcome. In fact, that might be your main takeaway. You might just need to sit down and clarify for yourself what is a dream versus a goal. That alone might be eye-opening for you. So for me, for instance, my goals have shifted over the years. In the early 2000s, I was mainly concerned with figuring out the perfect time to move to LA because if I was going to be a serious actor, if I was going to be successful, I knew that I had to move there. But I ended up waiting so long that the industry started to come to Atlanta. So by 2010, my goal had now shifted. It had evolved to, okay, I need to build a resume here in Atlanta and then move out to LA. Flash forward to 2024, and it's now very clear that I can continue to be a journeyman actor for the rest of my life and never have to move outside of the Southeast. Also, success defined as being on the movie poster making $20 million a picture has also shifted a lot. Now, to be honest, I'm perfectly content with continuing to book co-stars and guest stars with that possibility that I might be a series regular one day. That is still a very reasonable milestone that I may achieve. But due to this recalibration of my definition, I feel successful right now. And that's so important to my mental health. And I've also shifted what I consider growing versus stagnating. Candidly, I've gone through periods in my career where I wanted to stop auditioning for no-name co-star roles. You know, the cop number three, the person on the street, man. Because I wanted to move forward in my career, and it felt like I was stagnating if I kept auditioning for those roles. Now, I don't really make that delineation. Now, there are some roles that my agent won't even submit me for, but I'm not above taking a one-day co-star role on a TV show or a start-work-finish on a film. Start work finish just means you're only working for one day. 
because in short, I've had some of the most amazing experiences on set as a start work finish. And that contributes to my growth as an actor and as a human, if I choose to see it that way. So just because my last four bookings have been one day, one of them was two days, I'm not stagnating. And talk about a mindset shift. I have learned a ton from the folks I got to interview in our I Wish Actors New video series. Check out those if you haven't already. Armed with the new perspective that I gained from those fine folks, my last few bookings have been very fulfilling. Again, even though they've mostly been one day bookings. So if you're the type of person to write down your goals every January 1st, go back and look at the last several years. Are you feeling like a failure or are you feeling successful? If it's the former, then you might just need to get more granular about those goals. Break them down into actionable steps and be careful that you don't overestimate what you can accomplish in a year. I think it was Tony Robbins who said that most people overestimate what they can accomplish in a year, but underestimate what they can accomplish in a decade. And FYI, this goes back to goals versus dreams. Bookings are not within your control. So you need to be careful about making your goal for the year something like booking three national commercials and seven guest stars and one series regular. That would be an amazing year, sure, but that's the dream. You can't guarantee any of those bookings, not through any amount of hard work. You can improve your craft. You can learn more about the industry. You can build your relationships. Those are actionable goals. They result in you being ready so you don't have to get ready when the opportunity comes, but they don't guarantee bookings. But if you invest in yourself and follow Steve Martin's advice, be so good they can't ignore you, I think you will see results. Just don't make the number of bookings or the type of bookings your bar for success. Heck, with a pandemic, a dual strike in 2023, and an industry that's limping along in 2024, it should be a stark realization that you have to shift your expectations. You have to shift your goals. You have to shift your idea of what success is as the facts change. One last thought though, before I wrap up this video, think back to five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. And even though those earlier versions of yourself might've had overblown versions of success, I bet if you think about it, you've probably achieved things that that version of you from so long ago would be so surprised. The journey itself is something you could never have predicted. For me personally, 14 year old Matt was sitting alone in a movie theater watching Ace Ventura on the movie screen thinking, wow, that is something I wanna do. But my actual dream was just to be in a talent show. So that version of Matt would never have dreamed of the things I've accomplished. So if I lose sight of all that I've accomplished, then today Matt can get lost in the fact that I'm still not a number one on a Hollywood call sheet. I've been the number one on many of my own call sheets. So while 2000 and Matt's idea of success, the, the finish line, if you will, is still a long ways away, the journey has been more fulfilling than I ever could have dreamed. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on set.